So there are moments in life when you just know that something special is happening. You can just feel that there is something new or unique going on in your midst. There's this phrase I've heard the cool kids use, or maybe it was just Father Jack, <laughs> who says that you get all the feels, all the feels. Now I don't know about all of you, but in these days I've kind of got all the feels. In part, it's the feels of the start of the school year, and we feel that every year with the excitement of new students, new faculty, new community members, all the new courses, the new games, all the new experiences, there's so much. But this year, this year, some of those feels too come because we have this very special moment for our community. This community, as we begin in this new moment of embarking with a new president, Julie Sullivan, and we are so thrilled to have her with us. You see, today we feel the launching of this new time, this inauguration weekend. There's all the banners around campus, all the light and smiles. Even the boardwalk yesterday, which let me tell you, from staying in the Jesuit residence, had a celebration that went way into the night, at least among the students. <laughs> there is so much excitement. But St. Ignatius teaches us that when you've got all the feels, when there's so much excitement, it's a good idea to slow down and take a moment and pay attention. Because it's in pausing that we discover that gentle, inviting voice of God. Ignatius teaches us that it's through prayerful reflection on the movements within us that those tingles of the moment get transformed into the greatest commitments of our lives. So it's good that we slow down with this Mass, the Mass of the Holy Spirit, that we pay attention to all the things that are moving inside of us, and that we listen for that voice of God who's always been with us, and that we pray that the Holy Spirit bless this school year and bless our new president. Now today we hear two accounts of the same event from our Christian tradition, the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. And I think each of these accounts has something to teach us. First, we heard that account from the Acts of the Apostles. It's the big version of the story, with its mighty wind, with those tongues of fire. The disciples, after a long time on lockdown, they've been locked down. They've been living in fear. They've been locked up. They haven't been able to go out after the, after the death of Jesus. They feel in that moment the Holy Spirit coming upon them. And to everyone's surprise, out of that moment of lockdown, these people that could not speak now come out. They go from being self-doubting fishermen and fisherwomen to being people who can speak a word of healing to the world. They gain a voice. And in, when they start speaking, everyone around them is amazed. It's not what we expected from these people. It's liberating and life-giving to them and to those that hear them. But notice in a brilliant detail of this story, the disciples don't just gain a voice through the Holy Spirit, they gain multiple voices. They speak a truth that is stronger because of its diversity. Rather than speaking only the Aramaic of their region, or rather than speaking the dominant Latin of their Roman oppressors, they speak in that tapestry of languages from the so-called lesser places, the languages of migrants, the dialects of the rural areas, the inner cities. And well, when they speak that language, it touches people's lives. They tell their stories, and people hear their own stories echoed back. And they tell the story of Jesus, the one who called each one of them by name, who taught them to be neighbor to the widow and the orphan and the stranger. Jesus who welcomes and cherishes every member of our shared human family, the one who proclaims a year of favor from the Lord. Now, aren't we experiencing some of that same thing right here today? Part of the excitement of these days comes from hearing fresh voices, fresh voices, especially for the first time in the history of Santa Clara University, the voice of a woman as president of the university. And hearing her voice invites each of us to hear how our voices can offer something new and distinct to our community and to speak boldly and constructively from our own experiences, diverse as they are, and to see our community in a whole new way. To hear the voices that have long been overlooked, told to keep quiet, 
How can we this year, those of us that are professors, make sure those voices show up on our syllabi? Make sure they have a space to be heard in our classrooms? How can we as students make sure those voices are heard in our residence halls and have a, way, a voice of healing and welcome when they come to us? How can we make sure they're reflected in our research and the community that we form? And we hear too the voices inside each one of us that we often have felt silenced or unable to express whether that's by our culture or the political moment, or just that challenge of trying today look like we have it all together. See, today we're called to let every voice come out because it's there that the Holy Spirit is working in a myriad of beautiful ways. You see, in our Pentecost, the Holy Spirit becomes active among us. The Holy Spirit disrupts. The Holy Spirit transforms. Something dazzling and ever surprising is set forth. And our university, if we pay attention, and each of us will be transformed too, will never be quite the same. But if you're like me, as much as I love some good transformation, I gotta admit, disruption always makes me a bit nervous. Am I ready for this? Do I have the strength? Do I have the courage? Does my community have the courage, the strength to receive this? And after all this time of COVID, can I really bring my full self to this? And that's why it's so good that we hear that other Pentecost story, the one from the Gospel of John. It's sometimes called by scholars the little Pentecost, because there the risen Jesus comes to the disciples in their quiet place, in their doubt, maybe in their self-doubt, their cynicism. He comes with tenderness. He comes with understanding. His first word is so perfect, he just says, peace. In the midst of all this excitement, all this disruption, peace. And then he gently breathes on them. And he gives them this gift of the Holy Spirit. You can imagine what it must have been like for those disciples in their doubt to all of a sudden breathe in that fresh breath, their lungs filling up, standing up again and realizing they each had something to contribute believing, hoping against hope, that they could make this difference. That let their doubts, do I belong here? Am I good enough? Am I up to this? Start to slip away and to know that they each had a mission here. And then Jesus gives them this mission that is so glorious. He's told them they have the authority to forgive sins, to breathe that same breath out of the Holy Spirit and set their fellow human beings free everywhere there's doubt, everywhere there's fear, to help people be lifted up so that they can believe in themselves. To use Pope Francis's phrase, they become people who untie the knots in human relations. It's a mission that we all share, untying the knots, bringing peace and healing and reconciliation in our friendships, in our families, in our own psyches, in our economic and political life, and even in our care for our common home so broken at this time, how our world needs people who can untie knots, who can show compassion, who can rebuild hope. It starts for us with letting that breath of the Holy Spirit enter into our lungs, taking courage and standing up tall in humility and in confidence to share that breath with others. You see, with the Holy Spirit, my friends, we can do great things. And this Santa Clara community has great things ahead of it. It's in our DNA after all these years, the work of reconciling and liberating. It's been the mission of Jesuit schools for almost 500 years. But it comes in a fresh way, a unique way today in 2022 here in Santa Clara, here at Silicon, in Silicon Valley, from this privileged place of innovation this privileged place of discovery. And with the greatest richness of voices this university community has ever had in its entire history, we get to chart out a whole new course, a whole new way of being Santa Clara, a whole new way of imagining our impact in the world, a whole new way of having class, of listening to one another, of constructing community, and ultimately living in solidarity and common bond with all our fellow human beings. God promises to unleash something entirely new in us. And thinking about that, my friends, 
of this glorious new thing that God is taking shape in us, well, it makes me right, takes me right back to all those feels, all the hope, all the enthusiasm, all the excitement that swirl around us here today. So as we stand on the cusp of this momentous new year, we do well to draw all our voices together to invoke the Holy Spirit. May the Holy Spirit bring peace and consolation and great joy, untying the knots in us and setting us free to unleash the potential of our university and the voices of each and every member of our human family. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth, and especially of this, our beloved Santa Clara University community.